Wrestling featuring the JDF Memorial Sovereign Sound Bowl. As always, you can find us on most platforms that stream your favorite podcast episodes, including Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. If you're listening on iTunes, leave us a review of the five star kind. Links to all the platforms and the merchandise available only at ykwrestling.com. Welcome to the Knock of You Buckingham Palace. I am the Thespian TC Fontaine, joined by Reek Havoc. Welcome, sir. How do we do? We do. We so do. I feel like when I was doing my British voice just now, it was a little bit of it that was like kind of... A little Wakanda-ish. <laughs> so we 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 didn't went from British to to Wakandan to to African. I'm an African king, apparently. Uh, it's, the, it's the right month for it. Yeah, it is. So maybe we should just do an African accent at the top of the show for the rest of the episodes this month. I would do it again. I will start over, but never mind. We ain't gonna do that. We ain't gonna do all that. Welcome to Knuck if you Buckingham Palace again. It's Black History Month, as we mentioned before. How many Black History Months have we done on this show? It's got to be the fourth. Yeah, it's the fourth. Yeah. 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 I, I, I first did an episode with y'all during Black History Month. Yeah, you did. Hey. <laughs> oh, I'm black, y'all. And I'm black, y'all. And I'm blacker than black. And I'm black, y'all. And and when you raise your fist up, you gotta you gotta raise that shit hard. You gotta don't don't do no shit like this. I seen motherfuckers be raising their fist up like this and shit. No, put your fist up high. <laughs> That's the whole point of it. Put your yeah, fist you gotta, up high. You gotta flex with it. You know yeah, that, yeah, you gotta you can't you can't do no weed. You can't nah it make you look weak, dog. Yeah. Shout out to Black History Month, man. Facts. Shout out to all the black wrestlers. Out there, and even I met Johnson. Shout out to him too. Like he count, he made history before. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna bring I'm up mad. Ahmed Johnson a lot, man, because uh, yeah. I found out some stuff about Ahmed Johnson this past week. Because I was just like, man, I'm about to do some research in the black wrestlers. That's why we don't have no black wrestling content up because I wasn't prepared. So players fuck up. But uh, got some. I got we got some on YouTube. Got a couple things on YouTube. But more, we're going to be YouTube-focused primarily. So some stuff I put on, on the Instagrams. I don't know what I was about to call it. Uh, put yeah. some stuff on Instagram. Trying to build up the YouTube, though. So subscribe to the YouTube page, ykwrestling.com. It's a link right there to subscribe. Takes you right to the YouTube channel. It'll, it'll have you subscribe automatically if you click on it. So just click on it. That's all you got to do. Easy. Easy work. So, yeah, a lot of Black History content coming up there. But uh, I was researching Ahmed Johnson. I was like, where Ahmed Johnson been at? We ain't heard from him since, uh, dang, what was his name in WCW? It's Googleable. Because wasn't he beefing with Booker T over the the letter T in WCW? That sounds right. That sounds right. It is Googleable, though. It is Googleable. Let's look this up real quick. I met Johnson 59 years old. Mm. Who would have thought? Right? <laughs> big T. Yeah. He was Big T in WCW. Uh, him and Booker T was uh beefing over the, the letter T. <laughs> yeah, man. man. Yeah. Uh, let's read this. He got a little, he was only there for a cup of coffee. So I'm going to read this little tidbit from Wikipedia. In late 1999, uh, Norris, 
I'm assuming that's his shoot name, signed a contract with WCW and debuted as sold out as a heel, gained a massive amount of weight at this time and was aptly named Big T. He interfered in a match against, uh, excuse me, he interfered in a match between Harlem Heat tag team partners and real life brothers Booker T and Stevie Ray. He attacked Booker, causing Ray to be disqualified. Big T and Stevie formed the team Harlem Heat 2000. As Super Brawl, he defeated Booker to earn the rights to the Harlem Heat name and the letter T. <laughs> That's Russo for you. Uh, at Uncensored, he and Stevie lost to Booker and Billy Kidman. At Spring Stampede, they participated in a five-team tag tournament for the vacant tag team championships where they lost to eventual winners Shane Douglas and Buff Bagwell in the semifinals of the tournament. He was released by WCW shortly afterwards due to ongoing weight issues. Which was a thing before he even got there. Yeah. And, so and mind you, the Booker crazy. had a feud with, with, with Ahmed over a T. And about two years later, he'd have a feud with Edge over a shampoo commercial. Over shampoo. <laughs> like, which he, he brings that up a lot on NXT, which I thought, like, I might have been one of the only few people that I remember that feud because it was ridiculous. But, shit, that's, that's a WrestleMania feud for you. You feuding with a dude. He done took your commercial. You thought you about to get this big endorsement deal, and I thought I was about to get broke off, dog. <laughs> here come Edge taking, you know, it's it's that's actually the the year before. So for two straight years, a white man has held Booker T down at WrestleMania. His first Damn. two manias. Damn, that's tragic. That's Black History for you, right there. That's straight tragic. <laughs> Shout out to Booker Tito, man. Seen uh seen him in NXT finally got something cracking with a uh, reality of wrestling. I think Ivy Nile is supposed to be making an appearance. I don't know if it's in ring. And I definitely thought uh we got a talent exchange popping, but uh Shawn Michaels said nah, fam. It ain't like that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'll uh I'll touch on that when we get to the rumors. When we get the rumors. Uh speaking of NXT, they posted a Black History Month graphic on the Instagram. Man, and I'm looking through it and I'm just like, What's damn, I see like there's a new day. I see Alicia Taylor. I see Mello and Trick. I see Apollo, you know, the, yeah. the ones we expect. And I see uh, Caden Carter and uh, mm -hmm. then what's the old girl named Mari Miller seeing Last right. Legend. Yep. But then I'm looking, I look again <laughs> and I see Sol Ruka at the top and I'm like, mm. Sol Ruka Black? Apparently so. Uh, she posted a picture. Her daddy is is straight up brother. Yeah. So I don't know how I didn't see it before because now I, I, it took me a minute and I started looking at pictures of Soul Ruka and I went back and watched some Soul Ruka highlights and I'm like, okay, I see it now. After mm -hmm. that, it makes sense because only somebody with black genetics can move like that. Right. <clears throat> no offense to nobody, but I'm yeah, just being just, honest. It's just true. It's just yeah, it's true. true. It's, it's true. true. It's and then I was so taken aback by Soul Ruka, I went back and Didn't looked at notice. the graphics like 10 <laughs> minutes later. I see Kiana James on there. I'm like, hold on. Now this one is oh. <laughs> like, wait, what? Because I I've I've, no. I've gone through Kiana James Instagram before because like something struck mm -hmm. out to me. I was just like, she's ambiguous. Right. Because I, I I did my research before and I didn't find anything conclusive. That would lead me to believe. So now I step back. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, all right, her name is Kiana James, bro. Yeah. That's a black name for real. Kiana. <laughs> Kiana and James. So I, 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 I had met many white people with the last name James before. They kind of phased out. Black people took that name over. Uh, That's true. That's true. <laughs> Jones, too. I met a white woman named Jones a few years ago. I was like, what? Y'all still exist. Y'all still yeah. exist. Uh, but no. So Ruka, Crazy. Kiana James, shout out to them. Welcome to uh welcome to Stanhood, I guess. <laughs> we stand for all black wrestlers. So facts. Not all of them. It's, it's some of y'all we, we leave on the other side. Harriet Tubman stop. But It'd be like that. Uh, Y'all, if you know, you know what I meant by that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, welcome to Stan Hood. 
I, I'm even more of a stand for Kiana James now because the whole time she was trying to take that bar from uh from Briggs and Jensen in them. Yeah. The whole time it was just for reparations. That's all it was. I can get with imagine, it. Imagine that. Imagine that. More on Kiana James later in this episode. Oh yeah. Uh, now, so I, I can't stand this shit that people be doing. People have been doing this on the internet for years now. To, uh, oh, they invited to the cookout because a white person sang with some soul. This white mm-hmm. dude singing Maxwell one time, they invited him to the cookout. Come on, dog. I mean, <laughs> I mean that, that warrants consideration, but I mean, I'm not. Uh... But you remember that white Kappa from years, years back? Why does that sound familiar? They invited him to the cookout because he shimmied well. Oh, stop. Man. Don't know nothing about this man's uh, politics. Nothing. <laughs> so I hate that phrase, but for content purposes, we needed something to talk about on the episode. What wrestler would you invite to the cookout during Black History Month? Oh, well, we talked about it a couple like last week or a couple weeks ago, uh, DDP, for mm. show. He's on my uh, list. Yeah. RVD, without question. Oh, yes. <laughs> I forget Rob, man. Yeah, man. That's one of the easiest ones. Uh, Jeff. Jeff got to pull uh, up. Jeff, yeah, Jeff always had his kick out invite. That made me, that, I was thinking of uh, that, that, that wedding episode where they had Boys to Men, not Boys to Men, uh, Jagged Edge. Oh yeah, Jeff uh, we, was. Man, yeah, Jeff man, was, we and Jeff had the segment with Yin Yang Twins earlier that night too. Oh man, they were wilding out. Yeah, Jeff Ben had his. That's what I'm saying. Straight up, uh, Edge, because uh, lest we forget, he came out on Monday Night Raw and said, "Listen, this town does not give Martin Luther King Day his proper respect, so I'm not wrestling in front of y'all." Rated our civil rights activist. Big facts. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I posted that uh, on Instagram, too. It, it's getting, like, hundreds of likes every day still. <laughs> we kind of building that following up again. <laughs> Just off there of we go. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, Got be, to gotta be Cody Rhodes. I mean. Oh, yeah, Martin Luther Cody. You know what I'm saying? Long-time civil rights activist before we even realized. And obviously a time and We gave him too. a lot of grief for that. Yeah, like we we I'm not we're not gonna play a revisionist history here. We gave him a lot of grief for that. Yeah, but it, sure here's the thing: when uh you marry a black woman as a white man, as a white man from Georgia, mm-hmm. it, so you're a white man from the south, and you marry a black woman, and you do something as tone deaf as that. It is important for you to grow and grow from that moment and learn. And he took like the five months after that to learn. And so, excuse me, God, you ever get a burp stuck while you live talking on a podcast? It's crazy. Uh, (laughs) It's the worst. (laughs) But you remember like by, I want to say it was like December of uh, 2021. I was on here and I was like, Cody Rhodes, I'm coming around to him. He was still in AEW, so don't think this, like, I switched up when he went to WWE. No, this was before I even knew he was leaving. That I was just like, you know, he's come around to me a little bit. Like, Mm -hmm. growth. He learned. So, yeah, Martin Luther Cody, he's invited to the cookout. I said said it a few times. They they hit them with the flash cam, him and Brandy. Facts. Like, I don't know when, but it happened. So, uh, on my list, man, you know, I had Jeff, I had DDP already. Uh, Kevin Nash. Just off rip. First oh, wrestler to wear FUBU. So he was he was repping a black owned uh, apparel brand before any other wrestlers were. Anybody, you know, I mean, besides like rappers and stuff, I don't think anybody else was wearing FUBU like that besides Big Diesel. Yeah. So shout out to shout out to Kevin Nash. He he coming anyway. And he would fit in well too. Like he probably played oh, dominoes sure. with your uncles and shit. Right, right. Yeah, he know what he's doing. Yeah, he know what it is. Uh I'm gonna invite Randy Orton to the cookout, man. Okay. Yeah. I'm with it. Because Randy Orton gonna bring the music and he's gonna bring the libations. So <laughs> <laughs> you invited off rip. 
what time Samoa it is. Joe. We bring Samoa mm. Joe because Samoa Joe probably freestyle with your cousins and shit. Mm-hmm. He joined the Cypher Circle. Yep. You already know some. I'm not necessarily inviting him to the cookout, but you know somebody else probably going to invite Ric Flair. Oh, God. Yeah, one of the one of the old oh, uncles geez. that your old head. One of the yeah, the uncles that that watched him, you know what I'm saying, back when he was cutting fire promos and you know everybody everybody loved him or hated him or both. <laughs> uh R V D, you said yeah, I, I had to put him on my list again. Uh I might invite LA Knight low key. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. He might have a party turned up. John yeah. Cena. We oh, and like, John Cena offer it. That that that's for like twenty years. We knew about that. <laughs> John Cena pulled up to the hood for the uh, for the video shoot with Murphs. We talked mm-hmm. about this. Yeah, we, we didn't chill it. No security. Right. I think was it Murphs that said it on Twitter. I want to say Murphs was like he pulled up to the hood. No security. He was just chilling with us for for hours. Yo, it, so he invited. It, it, you know, so we didn't get. Uh, I don't feel like we, we give homie enough props for like that fire ass concert he had on, on Raw. It was it was on Raw, yeah. It was like right after he got drafted. Him and oh, five. they had the Battle so they of the had Bands a and shit. concert the same night. Like, oh my god! <laughs> Let's not ever do that uh, again. He performed. He performed like Bad Bad Man. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. did that. Uh, this man had bumpy knuckles on Raw, now. bro. Come on now. Yeah, and they Free was like. Box. They was turned the fuck up too. Like it wasn't that was like some shit that you see like on you know like the war shows and stuff. Right. Like we forgot we was watching wrestling for like two minutes. <laughs> Man, listen, if, if John Cena faded out and wasn't as fucking popular as he was off of that one gimmick, this man might have had a good little career just like rapping. Yeah. Like, I, I think could, people would have still sworn. cared about him. Like he had the connections with the hood. He had the connections in the industry. I think he would have been straight. Yeah, man. His kind cousin, you know, his cousin. Did, like, yeah, he done did some music cold for. Too. He was yeah. Like, like you had these two cold white boys rapping, and they from Boston, like a Boston suburb, and they cold. Right. Hey. Yeah, they was nice with it. Uh, one last person, we are gonna move on. Uh, I'm gonna invite Terry to the cookout to get our reparations. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna have some uncomfortable conversations. So you bring him there to get Might his get ass a little physical. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you, seen the, you seen the 2K clip? Yeah, I'm about like to that. say. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we 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 bring up just you remember on training day when Denzel brought the white boy to the projects? Yeah, it's a, yeah. I got you. I got you. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to Terry getting his yeah. ass whooped at the cookout. There you go. Pull up, like, hey, what's going on, brothers? We all hey, look at the barbecue today, brothers. Yeah, somebody getting cooked. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, man. I got uh, your plate. <laughs> hey, we watch wrestling all week long here at the Young Kings Wrestling Buckingham Palace. Not give you Buckingham Palace. Marketing, branding. Uh, what did you watch this week, man? Uh, I know we watched In Your House Six. Oh yeah. yeah, that was uh, that was probably the main thing. They said, "Why the fuck are y'all watching In Your House 6 I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, we watched it for a pay per view review on the Apron Bump podcast this upcoming Wednesday. Apronbump.com at Apron Bump. Shout out to my guy Kyle and always sure. inviting us. Not always. It's our second time being on there, but yeah. it does reach out to everybody. Right. Maybe reach out to you. So follow Kyle at Apron Bump. Great uh, pay per view review podcast. I low key want to steal his swag one of these weeks. <laughs> I think that's yeah, something we should do. That's, all, that's always fun. We should but do yeah, that. For, we should do that for Black History Month. We're gonna re recap one of these uh these all black indie shows that be going on. Ooh. I'm gonna find one of them, and we're gonna review that for Black. What's what we gonna do? I'm okay. coming up some. Might not might not get it out during Black History Month, but it, it'll be on the table. Gotcha. So, yeah. I'm with it. Uh but uh in your house six. Uh yeah, that was a decent little final pay-per-view before Mania 12. Um 
It was a buddy with a, a trash man gimmick who was over as hell yeah. with the crowd in 1996. Very, uh, very uh, under underrated, underspoken of. I guess so. Duke DeRose <laughs> was his name. Uh, we had HBK, Shawn Michaels versus the King of Hearts, Owen Hart. He, yeah, he was the king. He was the king already at this point. Uh, Did he? Was he? It's Google. Yeah, it's Google. I know Shamrock won in like one of the years. Yeah. It's Google. Let me look it up. I got you. Or you look, you look it up. All right, you look it up. I'll yeah. keep going. Uh, what else happened on this card, man? Yokozuna got to talk for the first time ever. I have never heard Yokozuna talk. And speaking of, I'm going to circle back to our last topic. I'm going to also invite the whole entire Anawaii and Fatu family to the cookout. Oh, I'm about to – they was coming in anyway. They was coming anyway. They was barbecuing. Like, they was grilling. <clears throat> they grilling. They playing dominoes. Undertaker, low-key, could get invited to the cookout too. Yeah, yeah. Undertaker be playing dominoes. Because, cause, you know, so, well, the BSK crew, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, And, like, you know, the – the the late great Paul Mooney once said, Samoans ain't nothing but some old niggas. Thanks. So uh <laughs> yeah, I was gonna be there anyway. But uh um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Owen yeah, won King in the ring in ninety four actually. So he was already in the hearts. <laughs> in that same year, he won a Slammy Award for biggest rat. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> they was giving out snitch awards back then. I guess so. That's crazy. Woo. It's crazy. Damn. Damn, dog. Damn, so Owen Hart snitching and Brett be bitching. Crazy. This, 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 this I'm going to regret bringing this up, but uh, <laughs> Biggest Rat, that, uh, that, 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 that might explain some things that happened a couple years later. I know I'm going to regret saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I think I might know what this is referring to. This yeah. got something to do with a particular star in the sky. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Because we we we've discussed you know uh, potential uh, you know mob connections and stuff like that that uh-huh. could potentially be in you know and you know mobs don't like snitches so you know somebody might have made a call a certain night on a certain event and been like yep I need you to handle some business for me. And uh, I don't know. Just, just, just throwing that out there. That's just, I'm just thinking out loud. You know, what I'm saying y'all don't gotta run. Have been made, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and then the main event on this show in your house six, we got a uh, Diesel versus Bret Hart for the WWF title. Uh, Diesel got cost the match by the Undertaker, and uh, we'll talk more about this pay per view on the apron bump. Did a full review yes, on that. Shout out to my yep. man Diesel Kevin Nash. He had Roseanne theme entrance music. He did. Go listen to his theme and go listen to the Roseanne theme song. It's the same shit. Yeah, I I hadn't thought about it when I was watching, but like, I've always thought that. My whole, ever since I knew who Diesel was, I thought that. Yeah, man. Uh, Happy birthday this past week, man, to Becky Lynch and Fit Finlay. Uh, Also, Haku. The legend, Drake Maverick. Where's, yeah. What's Drake Maverick doing nowadays? I don't he's still know. in WWE, ain't he? I'm pretty sure. Last time I, I think checked. he's like a producer now. I don't think he's on the roster no more. Hmm. Huh. Shout out to him though. Uh, happy yeah. birthday, uh, Brian. Oh, he's Cage. a writer. He's a writer. He's a writer. He's on a writing team. Cool. Nice. Sheesh. Nice. Okay. Uh, Brian Cage, Vegas is on. Uh, Chris Saban. Shout out to Chris Saban. Dory yeah. Funk Jr. Turned like 80 something. Hmm. 81, I think. I did. Shout out to him and Terry. I think Terry's still out here wrestling on his like 50th retirement. Uh, Damian Priest had a birthday this past week from the Judgment Day. Uh, Madison mm-hmm. Rain, Impact uh, Hall of Famer. Yes, sir. And uh, your girl Ronda Rousey had a birthday this past week, too. Next. <laughs> Uh, and this week in wrestling history, not much is wrestling wise that's notable. Uh, but the XFL was born in 2000, and in <laughs> 2001, the first XFL game was played like a year to the day after uh, they were announced. 
uh, the Las Vegas Outlaws defeated the New York Hitmen. And as we know, the XFL only lasted one season, uh, was rebooted about 20 years later. Yeah. And uh, that season ended because of COVID and they went bankrupt and sold the company to The Rock. And they're rebooting for the third time this spring. I'm trying yep. to be out there. I need to I need to see how I get in some of them games. I don't know where they're being played at, honestly. I don't think it's being played at a legion. It might be. Well, I'm going to find that out. Check I'm going to find out. that yeah. out. Uh, and then 2008, your boy Brock Lesnar made his debut in the UFC. Lost to Frank Mir first night on the job. Mm. Rough night. Yeah, it was a rough night. A rough night for Brock. <clears throat> Great night for MMA fans. Oh, man. Because there was no way they wanted him to win. No. Oh, my goodness. No, you can't have that, that fake wrestler coming here. Right. That's what they were saying. Shout out to fake acting like Acting like the man didn't have a whole amateur background in right. wrestling. It was the college champion. Like a lot of y'all UFC fighters out there. So... Yeah, man. Come on now. That's why he came through and whooped all your faves, too. <laughs> he beat Couture, didn't he? Or am I tripping? He did. That's how he won the belt. Yeah. Then beat Kane, though. We know and that. listen, I could I could tell you, I, I met Randy when uh when we was doing PFL a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, that man got some strong fucking hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that, that, that wasn't no picnic. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, y'all gotta y'all gotta stop frauding out here. Shout out to to Randy Couture. Shout out to your boy Fedor. He's still out here fighting too. I, I think that, that that was it. Yeah, he had a that, he had a fight yesterday. He had his. I didn't even know he's still fighting. Got his ass yeah, work. yeah. Got his uh his swan song in a dramatic fashion, first round. And that's how it so, always happened. The over the hill dudes just get embarrassed when y'all should have retired years ago. Just happened to Tom Brady a few years. How your last loss is to the Cowboys, to Dak Prescott. That's, that's your last game you ever lost was to Dak Prescott? Yeah, that, that's... You didn't even I go out on top like Peyton? No, uh, I think that's when he knew he was like, yeah, I got to hang it up. Like, I ain't never lost to these motherfuckers, and now I'm losing to them. Because you remember he, he left said... New England. Lost to Ryan say, You remember he said, he's like, I'll retire when, I, when I'm trash. It's like, if I can lose to the Cowboys, uh, I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying... I'm not saying that this is it, but... It's not a good sign. Maybe I should walk off now. <laughs> and your boy B-Hop, you remember that? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Between him yeah. and Roy Jones, like. Yeah, man. No win to fold. Flair, we've seen, it, we've seen it happen with Flair last year. That man literally died. Dog. He was dead. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> that, that man was looking it. at the light. He was having, he was. Them, however long he was out, two minutes. Yeah, it felt yeah. like two we hours to him. Probably he was having a two-hour conversation with God. God was like, "Man, what are we about to do, fam? <laughs> oh, I can't let <laughs> no. you in here right now. For real though, there's gonna be like, a lot of backlash if I let you in here right now. So you need to go. Either I can send you the other way, <laughs> or you want to live a little bit longer and get shit right. I might let you back uh-uh. in here." by the end of the year next year. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened with that. Yeah, but like one of the two of them was just like, yo, is you coming or no? Like, I need a I need a game time decision right now. Because <laughs> you got a lot of people watching you right now. Facts. It was like, you know you're on live pay-per-view right now, right? Yeah. I can't really let you in here off of that. So you either about to be a headline because you made it, or you about to be a headline because you did it. <laughs> One way or another. Facts. That man said, Woo, I'll go back. Right. <laughs> hey man, what we got for the royal addressing rooms? Woo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um all right, so we're starting off real simple. Uh Nick Khan is feeling real confident that WWE is gonna get sold inside about three months. Uh, oh, that shit getting sold before Mania. It, it could be. It could be. <clears throat> so I did not uh, listen to the investor call. I'm a terrible stockholder. Yeah. I'm gonna go listen to it, it later. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's doing all right. But um, 
obviously, you know, Vince came back primarily to uh, put together the, the strategy for making the sale uh, to, you know, get the best value for it. Uh, one of the names being thrown around was Comcast, uh, but uh, David Faber from, C- from CNBC said that it might is likelihood probably isn't happening. Mm. But uh, a possible buyer, uh, Endeavor, which is the parent company for the UFC, is possible as well. But uh, <clears throat> everything is on the table. But uh, there's a he had a whole uh, segment on there from uh, an interview they did. But uh, yeah, he's feeling uh, he's feeling good. He's feeling good about it. Okay. As long as they don't sell to Disney, I think they should be in good shape. Because yeah. I think Disney is going to be where it uh, it goes in the wrong direction, like everything else. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Comcast be the most popular as all it's ever been, but yeah, quality is gonna be so right. Like, y'all thought the like, quality was bad the last few years. Listen, yeah, Comcast or Endeavor, you're not likely to see much of anything change. Like you won't even yeah. notice it. <clears throat> now this one, this one's kind of funny. Uh Seth Rollins is not a fan of Logan Paul whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> like shoot. Yeah, yeah, shoot, straight up. Yeah. Um, he actually got on his Instagram to to let people know he don't like Logan Paul. He said a lot of us don't like Logan Paul, but him personally, he don't like him. Um, he said I don't I don't need him in my locker room or in my space. Um, he acknowledges that dude is like ultra talented, but uh, he uh one thing. He's not a fan of is him talking all this shit about tossing him out the rumble. Now, I mean, in all likelihood, this is probably setting up to a match between the two of them. This is a shoot. obviously. I mean, look, it, 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 in likelihood, there's probably some truth in it, but um, there's a good chance that they they're building this feud up. Um, yeah, that's a mania match. That, that's already yeah. You already know. They already set yeah. the seeds for that at the rumble, and then. They asked Seth about it. He had nothing to say. Right. Yeah, he's not uh he's not feeling it. Now, so I mean, so you can probably chalk this up to a work shoot, but uh there, there, there's there's a, a hint of some truth in there. He probably really don't fuck with him for real. But Seth has never been against doing business, i.e. last year when he worked and beat the shit out of Matt Riddle on camera. <laughs> but uh you know, we all know he don't fuck with him for real. <clears throat> and uh, last one. Uh, and they was up, like, up, down, down together. I don't know if they got beef for real, for real like that no more. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, if I had that's beef true. with somebody, I wouldn't just be chilling playing video games with them. Yeah, because I mean. And like, Becky you was know, there too. If y'all, right, right. If y'all get on TV, like, it, it's almost like when, when two dudes got to, like, you know, fight it out and move, keep it pushing forward. Like, yeah. Y'all get in the ring and y'all kind of get them frustrations out. Like at Hardy and Edge, perfect example. They was they was copacetic after they done beat the shit out of each other on TV, throwing in a few stiff shots, of course, and uh, street fights, steel cages, all that shit. It happens. Yeah. But uh, last one, <clears throat> and this just seems like it's gonna be a thing until either a sale happens or this man leaves again. So Vince has, or WWE rather, has a potential another lawsuit um, <laughs> coming from who is this? Dennis Palkin um, in Delaware's Chancery Court, um, and I think this was the dude from before that that was trying to ban Vince from from uh, the board from coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, but it says he also wanted to gain access to WWE's internal fires. Files to investigate allegations that Vince raped and sexually assaulted employees over the course of decades and then would pay them to cover up those allegations. <clears throat> so, um, this is a sick Negro. Yeah, yeah, this is this is a wild man. Uh, it said that when confronted, he paid victims nearly $15 million in hush money to buy them off. And there are some questions as to how he obtained and delivered all those funds to his victims without 
you know, the IRS coming and taking some looks. <clears throat> the lawsuit showed that Vince Donations. showed a flagrant, a <laughs> right, a flagrant disregard for basic corporate corporate governance norms and demonstrating his view that the rules do not apply to him. Oh man. So yeah, man. Soundboard said it all. It's a sick name, bro. Man. Yeah. That's why they're trying to sell this shit. <laughs> I, clearly. Clearly. Cause uh I guess before they find whatever the real silver bullet is, they like, listen, get this out of my hands. So uh this can continue to live and thrive on because I think they're coming for me, niggas. I think they're coming yeah. for me. <laughs> Fans watching. Yeah. Which I guess they, they kinda they kinda always been, but uh they finally got something to watch. Yeah. So uh, you so this is the same. This is the same dude that took on uh, the U.S. government at one point in time. So true. It ain't like he been scared. Oh, you got to show back up the court with a neck brace again. So. <laughs> that neck brace got him. He's like, man, we done seen this shit before. That, and it's crazy. Now. That's that's such a sitcom trope. And he's that's still what I'm saying. Away with it. That's the funny part. Yeah, man. Like you only do that shit. I seen that shit on Martin. Right, and they literally did that on Martin. Yeah, man. Let me find out. Vince was watching Martin News. Oh, that's a good idea, pal. Write that down. Listen, this dude lives his own gimmick. It's like he said. Listen, we make movies. He's a TV guy. <laughs> he brought that. He brought his sports entertainment into reality. Fact. He was not playing. Hey, man. Uh, I'm about. I'm about to look this up. I need to confirm. Okay. <laughs> The the trial was before Martin, okay? Because I was gonna say I was gonna attribute with Martin being a reason that WWE is still up and running. I wanted to oh, put man. that agenda so bad, but I can't. Oh man! Oh, so I would have pushed that agenda so hard. I mean, Vince McMahon was watching Martin, and he seen Shanae show up with a neck hmm. brace in court, and he thought that was a good idea. So. Shit, what if Martin got it from Vince? Hey, man. You never know. Hey. I feel like if they had been out, he probably would have probably would have bit bit that off. Since yeah. Vince apparently got the idea for prime time from Chappelle's show. Not surprised by that. I'm not. Somebody was gonna do it. Somebody was gonna spoof it. Yeah, that was uh what was it, the uh reparation skit? Mm-hmm. This is we, this is like the third time I've brought up reparations on this episode, and since it's Black History Month, that's the title. I was about to say episode, reparations episode title. <laughs> yeah, we done with the rumors. Yeah, yeah, we good. All right, man. Uh, we're just gonna get this out the way real quick. NXT Vengeance Day. They were at the uh, Spectrum Center in Charlotte, North Carolina, where sure. Lamelo Ball plays. Mm-hmm. You'll probably never see LaMelo Ball on WWE television ever again. But the hot, the hot mic. Yeah. <laughs> okay, y'all, y'all gave a hot mic to a 16-year-old and thought Ooh. it was gonna be a good idea. What's that? What's that the bag of people say? Or or any people? Uh went play stupid games, went stupid prizes, you know? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. But uh Vengeance Day, we got five. Was it five championship matches? Four. Four. Yeah. It's five. It's five. Uh both tag titles. The uh all the titles on the line. So five championships. Oh, yeah, matches. yeah, that's right. Um yeah. it was a decent little event, man, for for a big arena. Yeah. You know, the crowd crowd's always gonna turn up. And uh they filled the arena up pretty decently. Like it wasn't sold out or nothing. I think it was what, like yeah. eight thousand folks. Uh right about there. And that's that's decent for NXT on the road. They don't go on the road all the time. A lot of folks barely watch the show. I didn't watch NXT this past week. I don't know what happened. I forgot Vengeance Day happened. I would watch it this morning. <laughs> so, uh, let's let's talk about it real quick, man. Uh, Wesley uh, defeats uh, what's his name, Dijak. Yeah. His current name. It's not it's not Dijakovic no more. Nah, it's just Dijak. Dijak. Yeah. Uh, North American <laughs> Championship. Uh, Wesley got the dub. We kicked off Black History Month the right way. Yes, sir. 
it was a hot match. Uh, the chemistry was a little off. Seen like Dijak laying on his head a couple times. Yeah, he so, was. He yeah, bounced back they, up. Yeah, I don't think they they mixed well because Dijak got fucked up a lot in this match. Yeah, he did. Middle finger dislocated. Oh man. Bro, I saw that. Like, he should be lucky he don't wrestle on AEW. Oh, AEW wrestler, if they middle finger got dislocated, the company would probably shut down. <laughs> That's this all point, they do is give off middle fingers. <clears throat> if they couldn't do point, that, they couldn't operate. Yeah, man. <laughs> they, they bodies can't breathe without the middle finger, it seems like. Uh, but your yeah. boy Tony D came out there, helped Wesley get the dub. Wesley probably owes him a favor now, going in the stand mm-hmm. and deliver. Oh boy! That favor is the North American Championship. <laughs> Forget about it. I mean, you know, I, I don't think Wesley needs to hold it for that much longer. Nah, personally, no. let him finish out the month. He held it but... longer than I expected him to hold it anyway. So. Yeah, a hell of a lot longer. Uh, next up, keeping the Black History Month rolling. Caden Carter, Katana Chance, putting the tag titles on the line. Uh, I was a little upset, man, because they lost. Longest uh, longest tag title reign for the women all time, and they lost. But yeah. it was a screwy finish, though. Yeah, it was a screwy finish. Uh, yeah. But they lost to a recently discovered black person, Kiana James <laughs> and Kyle and Henley. So BHM yeah. is still intact, Reek. Yeah. Yes, we were still good. We, 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 we won that. either way. Exactly. Same thing goes with this next match. We, we would have won either way. Uh, Carmelo Hayes versus Apollo Cruz, two out of three falls. And uh, Melo got a 2-0 and sweep on this one. Light work. Yeah, light work. Uh, came out, stumped on this Apollo shirt, kicked it behind him. Said, I'm him. And uh, comes out here. Dabakato returns. Formerly known as Commander Aziz. Yeah. Uh, tried to come out there and help Apollo Cruz. Uh, took it to, to Trick Williams. Accidentally cost Apollo the second fall, though. Uh, mm-hmm. And then beats his ass afterwards, man. Yeah. Like, hold up. Hold up, fam. But I already know where this is going to go. He's yeah, you know, like, say, man, you left me to, to do nothing. And, and you turn your right. back on the people. So first, first chance I get during Black History Month, I'm going to come out there and show you what it is. Cause you turn your back on our people. Facts. Even though Black History Month is for Americans, primarily. Yeah. But shit, they in America. <laughs> he got his ass cooked. Hey. He got cooked. Adrian, you didn't go down like that, huh? He got cooked. So this first uh, hour and a half of the show was black as fuck. It was for real. And uh, we get some more <laughs> black stuff coming up with the New Day defending the NXT Tag Team Championships in a. Uh, this is this is the one I knew the streak was gonna end. In the words of Michael Cole, the streak <sighs> is over. Black people, yeah. black person got pinned the first time by a non-black person yeah. on this show. Uh, Gallus. We knew Gallus was gonna win. If you've been watching NXT the last like whenever since whenever they came back, you knew they were gonna win the tag titles the first chance they got. And uh yeah. I low key didn't care about this match. I ain't gonna lie to you. I knew New Day was losing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't that was winning. Into it. I wasn't really into the match. But it, it seemed hot. Like I had it on, you know, I just went and did some other stuff in the meantime. Uh but yeah, seemed like an okay match. I might go check it out later. Yeah. Uh women's championship, Roxanne Perez defeats uh Gigi Dolan and JC Jane. We got tables in this match. <laughs> that was fun. GG Jane, but I said GG Jane. GG Dolan goes through a table uh, on the outside. JC gets hit with a super pop rocks from like the middle rope. Whew. That was a, that was a fun little match, man. Uh, you knew Toxic, you knew they weren't going to coexist for very long in this match, even yeah, though they that, came out together. That's uh, how it always happens. Yeah, that's how it always goes. Like uh, we done forgot about Survivor Series where uh, the X come through and Sean was like. As soon as that bell ring, as soon as the bell ring, hey, hey, bro, no disrespect, but clap, get the fuck out of here. It was some sweet shit. Hey, it's just business. 
Just, well, uh, that's yeah, for the strap, bro. <laughs> yeah, you, you get both of them back on track and uh, ready for the main roster in a few months. So I can definitely see uh, them debuting Raw or SmackDown in LA. Well, SmackDown's not going to be in LA. But the Raw in LA after Mania or, or yeah. wherever SmackDown is at after Mania, I can definitely see them showing up. Probably need to debut them on SmackDown, perhaps. Probably. Yeah. They need they to be a debut Staples. on SmackDown already. But or not not Staples. What is it now? Um, Staples. It's Staples. It's, it's still Staples. I, it, I'm about to say it's Staples. It's still Staples to me. To me so, damn it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That ain't never going to change, as far as I'm concerned. And they might have to end up changing their name in a couple of years anyway. You've seen what happened in Miami. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They named their arena after a crypto company, and that crypto company went bankrupt, and they are no longer known by that name anymore. Big facts. So, yeah. Uh, toxic Attraction. I want to see them on the main roster officially. Or, yeah. or you had them come up earlier, mm-hmm. and you put them in a match with damage control for the titles at Mania. I'm here for that. Damage control versus toxic attraction. Mm-hmm. Mm. I said I need it. I'm fucking oh, yeah. with it. I'm fucking with it. Uh, and then the main good. event, Braun Breaker defeats your boy, Grayson Waller, <laughs> in the cage match for the NXT title. And uh, I would say it was better than the first match, but we knew who was going to win. And uh, I think we, we're finally arriving to the conclusion. It's been a it's, it's going to be a whole entire year, a whole oh, year. God damn! It took a whole year to get a compelling Braun Breaker feud. Yeah, basically, uh, Carmelo Hayes comes out and challenges Braun at the end of the show. Melo versus Braun, like it's two thousand two. Oh. Finally, bro. Listen, what is it? Uh, stand and deliver. Uh-huh. L.A. Oh man, brightest the brightest lights. Staples. Center. Staples. Mello, who doesn't miss, bro? This. Hey, when Mello come out with that that uh that Laker theme uniform too. Oh hell yeah! Hell yeah! That's that's I how gonna, you gonna know. I ain't gonna hold you either. When Grayson came out with that entrance and shit, I'm thinking like, oh no, hold up. They give an awful lot of bells and whistles to my guy right now. The 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 gold the gold sneaker and everything like that and had the girls out. I'm like, yo, wait a minute now. Y'all not about to do what I think y'all about to do. Oh no. <laughs> like, like this does not belong to you, sir. <laughs> this moment does not belong to you at all. Nah, fam. It's not what we doing. Right, it's time. It's time. Yes, shout out to Melo. It's a, uh, it's gonna happen. I see okay. the picture. I don't know if it, I don't know if this picture was from before the show or not, but it was a picture of Sean and Melo. I was like, damn, Melo is really his black son, <laughs> right? Yeah, man. Like the parallels are just too. So easy does that to make see. Trick Diesel? You know what? It just might, you know, I, I've only seen him, it was the one match he had. I think it was with uh, Wes. And the, it was like boxing a... Boxing round? Yeah, like a half boxing, half wrestling. Yeah, Harris's Cup rules. Yeah. Is what they call it. Or so we just said... He did in NXT UK. But. Yeah. So I think he'll probably be like a... A slightly faster and athletic version of Diesel. Like he'll he'll be better. College sports. Yeah, he'll be better. I went and looked up uh, Trick Williams' stats at South Carolina. He didn't do nothing. I thought I thought he played. He didn't play. He played on special teams primarily. Oh, yeah, yeah, that ain't. He ain't doing no special teams. <laughs> no offense to the special teams players, because you can still be a legend. Yeah, you can get in the Hall of Fame off some special teams. Right. It's like. Like Matthew Slater. I don't think he going into the hall, but he a legend with the Patriots. I'm about to say, like, that's the one thing. You know who Matthew Slater is, but he's never been uh, on offense like that. Yeah. He's just been a special teams guy. I think he played offense like one year. 
Yeah. He's the greatest, one of the greatest special teams players in NFL history, though. And you've probably never heard of him because special teams don't get that much attention. Unless yeah, you're Hester. Sweet it. Oh, for Daryl Patterson. Josh Cribbs. Josh Cribbs. Josh, Josh Cribbs was cold. What? Ooh. It was before we risk turn this to an NFL podcast. Yeah. <laughs> That boy Josh Chris was something else, man. Man, listen. One of the only shining spots on the Cleveland Browns ever. Facts. But uh, let's talk about uh, Monday Night Raw after the Royal Rumble. And uh, we got the Royal Rumble winner, Mr. Cody Rhodes. First person you hear. You knew that was going to happen. Yeah. How many Royal families is there in wrestling? There's more than one. Yes, sir. And uh, one of those... Royal family members said, you know what? You already know I'm facing another royal family member at WrestleMania. And it's official. And the graphic looks so Yo. unbelievable. Mm. Like, if you gather me up, I would say at the end of 2009, what? The end of 2019, excuse me. If you take the end of 2019 and you give me that screenshot of that graphic that says Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania, I would have looked at you like, what? Mm. Man. Cause that, so Cody going oof. back to WWE? Right. So Roman about to be with Paul Heyman? What the fuck is going on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't believe none of it. So it's crazy. So shout out to Cody. Yeah. Some extreme crystal balling. Yeah, man. Uh, I got a little something to say about Cody here uh, momentarily. I'm going I'm to save it for, for uh, SmackDown. But uh, also, we got the Women's Royal Rumble winner, uh, Rhea Ripley, to a lot of people's surprise, challenge Charlotte Flair instead of Bianca. Uh, which this was right in front of us this whole time. Yeah, like, pretty we, we come to think about it. Like running back WrestleMania thirty six, uh, mm-hmm. Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley was the one that challenged Charlotte Flair that time, right? And Charlotte Flair won the run, and it was a mistake clearly because Rhea Ripley lost. And uh, yeah, this like I said, it was right in front of us the whole time. I know the Bianca match seemed more compelling at the time, but it's not time yet. Yeah, because realistically, that's all right with me if you want to keep it going. Yeah, like realistically, we we might not. We, we talk about this all the time. Bianca might have one, maybe two more years left, and uh, you know, by that time, who knows where Rhea is going to be? So, I mean, that could be like a a dream matchup at this point. Like when, we can do when that both too. of them, where both of them, right? When both of them are at their highest points, then it could be like that. Could be that that moment. That could be Bianca's last Mania potentially. That's, that's the trajectory that she's going. WrestleMania nineteen. Yeah, like the, the, the trajectory that she's going. It's like, listen, if we get to that point where it's like them opportunities just blew up like that, mm-hmm. then we say, yo, listen, you finally gonna do this, and you know what I'm saying. It's all yours now. But uh no, nah, her and Charlotte definitely had to run that back. I, I say the same thing about this that I said about Drew. Um, even though he's never really got well, I say he came close to it. Like Clash of the Castle was kind of like that moment for him, even though he didn't win. It was a hometown crowd, it was like a WrestleMania size atmosphere for him. Yeah. But um yeah, no, Rhea got to get this one back. And to me, I think it's going to be the catalyst for Charlotte turning because we, we done said already, the babyface thing is not going to last long for Charlotte. It's yeah. not natural. It's not her. So if that's how you kickstart that. It's, it's what the street's been missing. But uh, it's one of the things that it's like, all right, we do it for a little bit. Then we got to we gotta go back to, to basics. Yeah. Yeah, that Charlie, could be the Charlie double turn. Charlie, Surprise. They do. They do. Yeah, absence makes the heart grow fond. Yeah, it's the old adage. Yeah, and and you know what you know what this Charlie thing kind of reminds me of a little bit, low key, when Triple H came back. Yeah, Triple H was a Triple H was beating Lita's ass every fucking week before he got hurt. Him and Stone Cold. <laughs> That's a fact. They beat Lita's oh ass like two weeks in a row. They definitely did. 
And then Triple yeah, H man. gets hurt and he comes yeah. back. One of the biggest pops ever. And he's yep. a baby face for a good like six months. And then they're like, all right, we we all That's we enough. did all we could do with this. So let's yeah. let's move on. Let's start the reign of terror. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're gonna get from Charlotte Flair. Yeah. Cause you can't have her just come back doing the same shit as a heel every time she come back. So we had to do something different. Yeah. It was good. We know inevitably she gonna be back at her old ways. Right. And that's yeah, when this, the fun gonna start. This gonna she be like be a one to beat Bianca. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, I'm sorry if I spoke that into existence. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm scared now. But no, that that could be like a a double turn moment, which Ooh. when ex- when executed right is one of the most beautiful Rhea's things you had in wrestling. Crazy receptions because like, Rhea Ripley as a heel is not gonna last long either. Exactly, Ooh. Stone Cold Bret Hart. She that's what I'm saying. When when executed per- properly, it's one of the most beautiful things in wrestling. Like uh, the the pop that she got when she won, it was like you almost forget that she'd been. Beating another man's father up for, for like the last I don't know how many months Derby. now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, man, like it's 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 one of those things that what happens, what comes naturally, is what they're gonna go with. What makes the most sense. So I think Rhea, the the more noise that she gets going up, leading up to WrestleMania, and I guess she'll be on SmackDown more. Mm-hmm. The more you're gonna see the, some cracks start to form with Charlotte, and then she finally goes snap when she loses the belt. Oh, Which yeah, makes that's sense. Gonna be fun. That's gonna be fun. I can't wait for that now. Yeah. Uh, but since Bianca Belair is not facing Rhea Ripley, she needs an opponent at WrestleMania, mm. uh, which leads us to Elimination Chamber. Mm-hmm. Uh, the winner of the Elimination Chamber will face Bianca Belair at WrestleMania, and uh, we got the Rumble Final Four. Well, not the Final Four, but the Final Four runner-ups: uh, Oscar, Nikki Cross, Raquel. What's her new name? Raquel Rodriguez. Rodriguez, yeah. And Liv Morgan uh, have already qualified. Uh, this upcoming Monday is a qualifying match. Fatal 4-Way, Candice LeRae, Carmella, uh, Piper Niven, and whatever the fuck Mia Yim's name is. Michin. They don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they keep, like, switching between saying it and not saying it. Like, know. they they strictly called her Michin in the Rumble. Yeah. But on Monday, she was me and you. Yep. I got a question. Uh, <laughs> who Who's coming up with this? Triple H? Is this you? Mm. Who's doing this? Because uh-huh. you confuse me. What is her name? <laughs> is it me, Chin? Or is it me and you? Right, it's a Gucci Wally Wally. Or is it one mic? This is black girl lost a shorty owe you for ice. That's a good question. What is it? That's all it's I a question. Know. It's a question we need an answer to. Questions if that you, need answers. If you if you'd be so kind. Please. Please, please, please. Uh so yeah, that should be a good uh fatal four way. Give me like 15 minutes of that. Mm-hmm. I'll fuck with it. Uh and the men's elimination chamber is gonna be for the US title uh qualifying already. Of course, Austin Theory, since he's the champion. Uh, Seth mm-hmm. Rollins. Uh, who did he beat? Uh, Pat Gable. Yes, there we go. Uh, Johnny Gargano beat um, Baron Corbin, which is, yeah. Not going to get into it. Uh, uh, Austin Reed beat somebody, I think, was it The Miz? Yes. No, wait. Dolph. It was Dolph. Dolph, Yeah. We yeah, got no, Johnny um, Gargano and Bronson Reed in this chamber match. Y'all must not want me to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I love oh, chamber. Man. It's for it's for a mid card title though. NXT chamber. It's it's, it's a mid card title. Like I don't care. We not gonna we not gonna go too crazy with it. Just make sure Lashley is in this shit. Yeah, he, he definitely gonna be in it. There's no way. There's Just no make way sure Lashley is in here. In fact, have Lashley win it. Because if you really want people to care about the U.S. title, Brock Lesnar ain't never held a mid-card title in his career. Hey, that's, that's the truth. That's the truth. And then have Brock keep that, that U.S. title. Man. You, uh, you see where I'm going with this? But see, 
I got you. Or I got you. Keep going. <laughs> Have him hold I mean, it until November. Survivor Series. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? Oh, no, stop. Oh, my God. Stop what you're doing, sir. Have the guy on the other show with his equal belt hold his belt to Survivor Series. You see oh, where I'm going with this? Man. You don't uh, want to see that? I mean, Gunther, I don't think we're doing that anymore. I don't think we're doing that anymore. I don't think you doing that anymore. Me. <laughs> you don't want to see that? I'll be down, but I don't think they're doing that anymore. Like, that's not, we're not doing the whole champion versus champion thing anymore. Now, I will say this. Uh, Gunther might have some big meaty men slapping me to his, his own at Mania because uh, I think what's on the table for him. Drew, right? Some banger bros action. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Triple threat. That's, that's what I'm yeah. Doing. Yeah. Um, and he's already been like one of the longest reigning champions are at the time. So I mean, if that happens, one of them gets it. You could always, when the draft comes around, I guess it should be after Mania. You can go through an Imperium head over to Raw. If Brock is still the champion, you got SummerSlam. Okay. You're gonna be back in Nashville, I get I think again this year. Y'all doing too you know much. We ain't get two summer slams in a row. Yeah, that's crazy. We can't even get WrestleMania. From, they running from the grind out here. Running from the grind, bro. <laughs> we were supposed to get Mania like two years ago. I'm telling you. Damn yeah, bro. man. Like once the once the once the stadium got built, like, what's the problem? We never get mania. Cause when we get mania, that's when I'm moving. Like that's literally <laughs> the only reason I still live here is like we get mania. I don't have to go all out of my way to go to WrestleMania. And now I kind of want to go to Mania in Philly, and I'm about to go out of my way to do that. Mm. But I wanted my first WrestleMania experience to be comfortable. It's unfortunate. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's true. I'm yeah. definitely going. It's, it's like an hour and a half for me. So Yeah, I'm about to pull up, done man. Deal. You pulled up and mess with your boy, I'm about to pull up on you. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to so, uh, the Elimination Chamber. Now, if y'all get but, uh, Johnny Gargano and Bronson Reed out of there early, I will say this. I, I give Bronson <laughs> Reed a lot of shit. But if anybody is willing to, to take that splash from him off the top of the pot, then I'm with it. Oh, my God. Then I'm with oh. it. You know they already played that. that. Yeah, yeah, if I don't see that spot in this match, then him being in the match isn't justified to me. I don't care that the crowd kind of fuck with him. I will admit that. I don't like him. He used to walk around calling himself thick. I never liked him. (laughs) Thick boy. (laughs) It's off that alone. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, What else we got on Raw? Let's wrap this up real quick. Uh, We got Bailey and Becky in a cage match tomorrow night. Uh, The one they were supposed to have a few weeks ago. And Mm -hmm. uh, things got cut for time. And people have been bitching and complaining about it ever since, acting like they don't care about Bailey and Becky, when uh, there's been a lot of stuff that's contrary to that well before this match. Yeah. For some reason, we just get reactionary to live TV and shit having to get cut. They still had a segment. The segment actually helped the feud a lot more. People don't like to look at the silver lining of things. That's what I'm saying. Y'all are still complaining about it. <clears throat> Even when Bailey came Damn out shit. and said the same shit, it's like this shit. It helped us any say anything, right? It helped a lot. Uh, on, I will man. say this: I don't like like Bailey like bringing up Seth and Becky. I don't, I don't like that. That was that was a little because it's a little, little low. That's a little yeah, it's a little below it, the belt. It's, it's awkward because Bailey is clearly not comfortable saying that. Like, well, she's yeah. hesitating. Yeah, it's like. They not like that. That's not Sasha, but you know they they they, they cool because you know they came up together. Yeah. So it's like it's it's certain things that it's like you know what we don't got to do all that, but I don't know. They got to find some reason to make this personal. But I feel like you could have. It's been personal enough. You don't got to bring up nobody's family, uh, right? Like you never yeah, brought up yeah. the family before. Y'all been beefing since August. That's right. <laughs> 
that's dead. Why are we bringing up family now all of a sudden? That's a fact. There's little things that just make no sense to me. I ain't thinking that. It's really been going on since SummerSlam. Like you, God, like damn. you literally have not brought up this woman's family at all. <laughs> like after SummerSlam, since she's been back, uh, she came back like right before Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. Y'all have been interacting back and forth since November. Yeah, that's crazy. You have not brought this woman's family up once, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> want to go for the low blow to get some heat. Like yeah. Bailey don't need to do all that. At this rate, I feel like we could have saved it for Mania because. Mm-hmm. After this is over, what's either of them really doing? Like, hey, six pack <laughs> challenges for the title again? Oh my god! No, 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 that's not happening because the winner of the chamber needs to be Oscar. Yes, no right. question. If you see, we all saw the pop she got at the Rumble mm-hmm. and uh, I said, rocking the rocking the kind of the clown look. I see, I mean, see, this is why they tapped in, because they must have listened and, and went before they wrote the script. They were listening to all the podcasts. Mm-hmm. This, this is what I choose to believe. Probably not true. I'm not that delusional. Yeah. But I like to believe that they do be listening to us sometimes to, to, to get some ideas. Yeah. What supposed to be thinking. Yeah. So when they said, yeah, I said, y'all, they need to figure something out with Oscar. They need to strike while the iron's hot. I don't know how they're going to do it. That's their job, not mine. They say, you know, that is our job. Let's figure out what we want to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Because that Oscar with Bianca at Mania for the title. On Carmella. Yeah, so I'm saying, like, yo, that's going to be magic. I don't even care who wins at that point. Like, oh, yeah, that's Carmella's be back, fine. by the way. If y'all didn't watch Raw, she's back. I thought oh, she would be back at the wrong time. She went back on Monday. Is it wrong that I don't? Is it wrong that I don't care? It's not wrong. I like yeah, Melis. I, like, I know a lot of people don't never care. Yeah, about yeah. It's, it's nothing against her. I just I don't really have a reaction to it. Like I saw her and I was like, oh, okay, what's up? And then oh, Oscar yeah, showed freak. up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. We still yeah. And then Oscar, yeah, and then Oscar right. showed up. <laughs> Oscar showed up with like the glasses on, and everything like that. And I'm like, oh. She got like, you know, like a star. Yeah. How much you this think Oscar's shirt cost? Oh, she spent the, she lives in Vegas. She lives in Vegas too. So I know she spent the grip. The Oscar, whole fit. Oscar, Oscar shops at the fashion show mall in Las Vegas. Okay. So yeah, that, that whole <laughs> fit was a that whole fit was a grip and a half. So yeah. Oscar Oscar drives a Lexus. God damn. A Lexus SUV. At that. Ooh. Okay. A big okay. body. Yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah, I'll be watching it's, Oscar's YouTube channel and shit. It's it's, it's real. I know all these things. I, I don't I don't be stalking Oscar now. Like, like <laughs> that's what it sounded like, huh? If you didn't know the context. Like how you know yeah, like, shit just, if y'all live in the same city, like, you be talking her? No. <laughs> like, no, no, I ain't. I just like watch her YouTube channel. That's all. Yeah. Just happen to live in the same city. Yeah. That's it. She followed me to be fair. <laughs> Hey, I'll live here first. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Ricochet too. I live here first before him. <laughs> I'll be forgetting he lived in Vegas. He just moved like a month or two ago. Yeah, because like I seen that. Uh, he might have been he, living when, uh, here before that. I just know he, he's been at least. Cause I seen he did like that promo, like right in front of the Paris, uh, the Eiffel Tower. Right, right. Yeah, because I, I saw the. Uh, the proposal to the Sam, and I heard uh, I heard he moved out there like just before here. that. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that's... Yeah. That's digressing. Cool, digressing. Uh, one more thing on Raw, and then we can move on. I'm packing the edits. Guess what? These peasants, you peasants. I don't know who to, to direct this to. What happened? <laughs> so, like, last week on this show, um, I found something out during our Rumble our Rumble uh, recap. Uh-huh. And uh, something that had to do with uh, a participant in the Rumble this year. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, I got you. 
Ooh. <laughs> and uh, you know the rumble seen Chelsea Green come out. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, ugh. And then she got thrown out the ring quickly, and I was like, thank God. Yeah. I was able to enjoy the match again after a brief uh, 30 second intermission or so. But mm-hmm. we get on the show, and my co host here <laughs> tells me how oh, Chelsea man. Green is reportedly set. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea Green is reportedly set to be hooked up with the Karen gimmick. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. You know, like reports, I don't believe reports. Y'all told me a few weeks ago Saudi Arabia was buying WWE and it was a done deal, yet WWE has not been sold. So I don't believe dirt sheet reports. I don't even listen to dirt sheet reports. I don't find out about shit that the dirt sheet's talking about until the royal address of rumors. And even then, we take things with a grain of salt. Yeah. But upon hearing that, I was disappointed because it sounds like something that she definitely came up with and told the dirt sheets herself. Because if you <laughs> if you pay attention, her first run, a lot of shit that was said about like Chelsea Green and shit was definitely reported by yeah. her to the door to the dirt sheets. Yeah. You gotta pay attention fact. sometimes. Stuff makes sense. So upon hearing that, I got very disappointed. Uh, Video was not uploaded because we're doing something different on YouTube. But in the video, I put my hand in my face. (laughs) I put my face in my hand rather for a good, a good like two minutes. I I didn't say nothing. I I let Reek and Katie talk. I said nothing because I was so disappointed upon hearing that. Come to find out, she shows back up on my TV on Monday night. Adam Pierce is, is in the is in the locker room. I think he was talking about the woman's chamber. Yeah, yeah. Announcements. Yeah, he was talking about the woman's chamber. He was so excited. He was I've never seen Adam Pierce filled with this much energy before about doing his job. I've never seen him this enthusiastic <laughs> to do his job before. He was so excited talking about this woman's chamber match. Like this is That's... something he planned out earlier in the day. He was like, Oh, I'm gonna kill him with this one. TC mm-hmm. and Reek gonna love this one. They say I don't do my job. <laughs> I did my job today. I feel accomplished. So yeah, mm-hmm. shout out to you. I, yeah, it was that was a good, easy choice to make. What you did, yeah, with these chamber matches, you can't go wrong with it. So I will give you your props. Adam Pierce is talking. Man, I see this long ass arm. Tap him on the shoulder. <laughs> and I have a long memory with wrestling. You remember I beat Reek in trivia a couple years ago. I have a long memory <laughs> about things that go on. Oh, man. The last time I seen somebody tap this man's shoulder while he was on screen, and I see an arm from off screen, it happened like two weeks in a row. And then the camera panned over, and those two times previously, who was it, Reed? I don't even remember. It was Chelsea Green. Oh, shit. So when I see the same thing play out on my TV after she just returned, <laughs> oh God, the feeling <laughs> I had in my chest <laughs> when I knew they were going to pan over and show Chelsea Green face on my TV, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <clears throat> and then guess what happened, Reed? Uh, That thing turned out to be true. She ended up having a Karen gimmick. Very true. So, who am I directing this to? Should I give it to you? I, listen, I, I just, I just, I know you didn't come up with the gimmick or nothing. I, I just told y'all what I was the first the person that saying. told me about it. Yeah, the streets was talking. That's all I was, I was just telling you what the streets was saying. So, for you just putting right. the idea in my head <laughs> and me getting disappointed very, very easily. Cause my disappointment, it all right. Here, if they would have just did it another way, if I didn't notice ahead of time, and she just popped up on the screen doing a Karen gimmick, I would have just been like, "What the fuck?" And I would have just gave the writers peasant of the week. But you know what, Reek? <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you first. You the first priority here. Oh, I just shit. wish you never told me that. 
Oh uh, man, listen, real just some rumors. I'll tell you what the streets are saying. That's it. So like I, I just just the fact uh, I, I and I get that you didn't come up with it, but the fact you put the idea in my head <laughs> it turned out to be true. Bring that ass here. Who else getting that ass brought here? Bring that ass here, boy. Chelsea Green herself. Oh. Because I know this is her gimmick. And I know she pitched it. And just like all the other gimmicks, she was pitching to Vince McMahon. And Vince was like, no, brother. No, no, he don't say brother. That's, that's Terry. I'm getting, I'm getting my old white man mixed up. Hold on. <laughs> Let's circle back here. Oh, man. <laughs> Vince was like, no, this is what Vince really said. Hey, ain't nobody trying to hear that bullshit, oh, man. But yeah, Vince was like, oh, I, don't, I don't think so, pal. Man, we can't do that. Can't have a Karen gimmick on the TV. <laughs> but you know what, Triple H, he, yeah, he, he let anybody do what they want. Low key, creative freedom to an extent. Yeah. Triple H is like, okay, uh, so, uh, you want a Karen gimmick? Uh, you know what? We want to see how it works. Give it a few weeks. Uh, you know, I, I see a lot of potential in you. Uh, that's why I hired you the first time. Uh, that's why I brought you back. Uh, you know, you know, I, I didn't think you got a fair shake the first go around. Uh, so, you know, if you can stay healthy uh, and do this, uh, we can make it work. Uh, Oh man! Now we have to see this Karen gimmick on our screens for however long. It, it, I feel like it's gonna be a while. Unfortunately, it's got this bad feeling that it's gonna be a while. SmackDown. Listen, let's talk about that real quick. I wanted it to be wrong too. I really did. I did too. I did. Too. Wait. Had that Kermit. Had that. Had that. Had that about Chelsea Green here. Had that Kermit gift face on when I see it happen. <laughs> It's all bad. Oh uh, let's shit. talk about SmackDown real quick, man. This is where the good shit went. Mm -hmm. uh, SmackDown is what we were all waiting for. And you knew they weren't going to give us what we were waiting for until the last segment of the show. They yeah. all made us wait them two hours. Uh, sure. But we got, we got a few, you know, here and there throughout the show. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much all this show is, is Roman Reigns trying to find out what's going on with Jay Uso. Asking Jimmy. And, and Jimmy Jimmy Uso got some bass in his voice. I had to bring this shirt back out because he he had to let Roman know. So maybe this shirt wasn't the waste of money I thought it was. Maybe because <laughs> uh I didn't even realize he was wearing that. I'm like yo yeah pull that out the archive. Yeah, had to bring this one back. Uh, yeah. But Jay Uso went ghost on his family. Jimmy Uso ain't heard of him. Solo ain't heard of him. Roman ain't heard of him. Paul Heyman ain't heard of him. Oh. Hey, his phone going straight to voicemail. Uh, so Roman's just like you know what I yelled at you earlier Jay not Jay Jimmy you know I I, 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 really, I raised my voice at you earlier you know my, my bad you know shit's just crazy out here we need to be a stronger unit than ever because like I said we at war y'all go get you something to eat man I got some catering in the, in, the, in, the, in the bus what bus I don't know they pulled up in a fucking Range Rover what bus are you talking about I do not know Continuity errors, possibly, but it's all good. Yeah. Solo and Jimmy go get some dinner, and Roman's like, "Got some business to take care of." Other mm -hmm. Roman goes out there and he's talking his usual tribal chief shit. Sami Zayn comes out in disguise and puts the brakes on Roman. Yeah, because Roman was talking about how Sami Zayn, you know, was using him the whole time, pretty much. He right. said, I saw it back at Survivor Series. Sami Zayn comes out and whoops his ass. I think he was just waiting on the cue. Because I'm going to wait for him to say something that's going to justify me coming there whooping his ass right now. I'm, I'm going to let mm -hmm. him think I ain't here yet. <laughs> and when he heard that one thing, he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I knew Sammy wanted something this whole time. He was using me the right. whole time. Sammy was like, no, the fuck I wasn't, let me, man. Let me fact check was, you right quick. I was gang for real. I thought I was gang for real. I was trying and, to be uh, that. Come out there, beats Roman up, hits him with his own move, hit him with a spear. Nice spear, too, by the way. 
He said, you know, I, don't, I ain't want nothing from you before, but I want something now, though. Because mm-hmm. you done fucked around and found out. I want that title. And I'm going to be at the crib. So I really yep. Yeah, I guess Jimmy and Solo was in the back watching, so they put the they they drop their plates. Like yo, yo, shit, sit this, sit this. this. All right, we got we got work yeah. to do. <laughs> hey, fuck this uh salt and pepper chicken. We didn't see the I wonder, yeah. I wonder if they like grabbed something real quick and was eating it while they was running to the ring. Probably. So they come out there. And uh, for for the second, not second week, second night in a row, got his ass cooked. Man. He got his ass cooked. Hey, he got cooked. Hey, you didn't go down oh, like that, us? huh? He got cooked. Again. He got it cooked was again. It was bad. Uh, it was about to be worse than it was on Saturday. But Roman was like, nah, nah. Oh, I wanted to hear me. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to wait. Cause I, I could whoop your ass right now here in, in South Carolina, wherever they was at in South Carolina. I could whoop your ass right here. I'm going to wait, though. We going to be at your crib? You want you want a shot at me at your crib? I'm mm-hmm. going to beat your ass in front of your own family. You fucked up my family, I'm going to fuck up your family now. I want you to – want your friends, your fam, your closest fans, everybody. I want Max. them all – to see you get your ass whooped and embarrassed. Facts. And you know what? Him, uh, Sammy getting his shot at Elimination Chamber makes way more sense anyway. Because yeah. this trying to shoehorn him into WrestleMania, tired of it. You know something? I said this before. I, I don't remember if we were talking about Sammy, but I've had this kind of, I've had this, this talk on this topic before. We... The, the 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 fans out there that are pushing this so hard, saying Sammy needs to be the one to get the shot at Mania, right? I've I've posed this question before. Where do you what? go after? Exactly, because you spend so much time. Like we talk about that. That's what it was. The um the chase. We spent so much time with the chase, and I think that was a lot. The last person I compared it to was Johnny, because Johnny had this this long run to the NXT title. He lost it after the first title run at this first as the first defense against Adam Cole. And everybody was like, oh damn, that, that was kind of fucked up. But let's be real, realistic. Who had the longer run? Who would have had more uh, storylines that he could build with the title? Johnny or Adam Cole? He could you can only be the underdog in so many matches. Adam yeah. Cole is gonna be Adam Cole regardless. Yeah. But like- that that's what this is. <clears throat> I mean, you can even use Sami Zayn himself as an example of that. Yeah. In NXT too. Right. Like his chase was over. And, and y'all forget who's booking the show. If you Thank watched you. him book the show in NXT, <laughs> like, it, it, it's never it's never was a thing for a baby face to have a good run after the chase is over with. Exactly. It happened with like, Sammy. That's why they nipped that in the bud literally immediately after he won the belt. It was like, yo, right. you already know what it is. <clears throat> like, it happened with Kyrie Sane. Um, even happened with Rhea Ripley, which was crazy. Yeah. So, I, you know, that, that's just the way this goes. But it's like, you know, you, you've, seen, you've seen it happen before. Like, Kofi, as much as we all love Kofi, getting his moment, that was all about the chase. Because everything mm-hmm. after that, listen, we, we still supported it. But it was, the best part was him getting the feud with Randy. Cause that lasted a couple months, but it's it like four months after he won the belt. Exactly. So it's like you had a bunch of just random people. And that's Kevin I, Owens coming out the woodwork, and I'm gonna digress uh, real quick, just while we on the, the the Kofi subject. That's why I personally did not care how he lost the belt to Brock Lesnar. I thought that was the most realistic way for him to lose the belt, and I still think that to this day. Why? Because I don't care about trying to 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 get retweets on Twitter by saying the complete opposite, like y'all. Because I don't think y'all feel that strongly about it. It's been three years. It's been over three years. And I still see Kofi losing to Brock brought up when y'all need some Twitter points. That's true. When really, so y- y'all thought Kofi was, was going to have a competitive match with Brock Lesnar? Seriously? 
when y'all yeah. looked at the when y'all was watching the show and y'all seen it was like six minutes remaining on the episode y'all thought it was going to be a competitive match yeah there's no way there's no way come on now i mean we saw he had a handicap match with him and xavier over in japan and uh realistically that's uh beats and ease yeah it was a, it was a, it was a, he got his ass a, cooked in that match too. Beat down, a straight beat down. So I mean, I, I didn't expect it to be much different. Um, I didn't like it, but it's like, like you said, the way the rain had been going up to that point, it was like, it was almost mercy. And Kofi himself said he ain't tripping over it, so y'all need to stop. Yeah. But that's just an example. It's like you gotta think about. You got to think about what comes afterwards. Yeah. Like, Daniel Bryan worked because we had seen Daniel Bryan be a world champion before that. Yeah. And it was because of the whole Sheamus thing that we said, oh, well, he deserved more than that because we saw his body at work. Sammy is, like, typically best in these situations. But if he doesn't have a Roman Reigns to stand across from to do it, this isn't going to work. Yeah. Y'all are going to get tired of it, and y'all are eventually going to start to simmer and you're going to hear crickets for him eventually. And y'all need to be realistic about that. Like you did to Kofi, like you did to Seth, like you did to yes. Becky. Exactly. Like at some point in time, y'all got to like sit there and think. I've been trying to do to Bianca, even though the crowds are saying otherwise, but the internet oh, I, is doing to I, Bianca. I love, I love the the fraction of y'all out there that the, the, the community that want to say that she's overrated now and she, y'all, y'all are sick of her. I love that. The dog whistle. Y'all. Yeah, I can't. I can't stand y'all. I really can't. But that, yeah, that man. dog whistle. We know what y'all mean by that. Mm-hmm. Cause y'all y'all like, said the same thing about Sasha. Oh, <laughs> y'all say the same thing about Naomi. Yeah. That, yeah. That, y'all 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 use the word overrated to mask what you really want to say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm ca- I'm catching a lot of y'all lately too. So yeah. it's not even it's not even suspicious. But, no uh, let's get yeah. back back on back on my topic here to my notes. Uh, like I said, Sammy getting a shot at EC uh, makes way more sense. It's in his crib. You know he's going to lose anyway. So mm. why, like, yeah, there's no way he's going to beat Roman Reigns, bro. Yeah. And I, I have a point to make on that here in a second. Uh, but, like, the energy in that arena when he loses in front of his crib is going to – you might rival the heat that you got with the screw job. High key. Yeah. You just might. Yeah, you're gonna piss a lot of people off. Montreal was not Bret Hart's hometown. Yeah, Montreal is Sami Zayn's hometown, literally. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you 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 have a a moment in the making that I am the moment Sami Zayn hit Roman Reigns with that chair. I knew that they were going to be facing each other at Elimination Chamber. Well, I I I had that on the roller decks because I. I said like three weeks before. I'm like, so Elimination Chamber is in Montreal. Well, I thought and, they would be uh, going for the tag titles. The, oh no, no, no. That's not that's not till later. Yeah. That that's coming later down the line. Once once they had announced uh, the Montreal show. Yeah. Yeah, they like, put, that's they put all it like, down. yeah. It's, it's it's for the title. So as soon as yeah. I seen it, I was like, damn, Roman gonna beat him at, at Montreal. Yeah. And that it was arena that... is going to be so uncomfortable with the energy when it happens. Like they might oh, yeah. throw trash at this man in the ring. They might they might throw a bunch of shit at him. They got to find a way for the for the bloodline in real life to get home safe. <laughs> High well, key. But that that's the point though, because at the end of the day, the people that are people that are on the fence about Cody, gonna be so far over that shit by the end of this show that it's like yo. We got it. We got we got exactly the energy that we need because it's like Roman hasn't fully gone been hated. It's like cool hate. Like we don't like you because we're not supposed to, but we fuck with you for real because this is the best shit on TV. Mm-hmm. He hasn't been full on hated since like 2017, 2018. They built him back up after he went through like um when he went through the leukemia thing again yeah. and he came back. He was doing good, but nobody would he be taker when he came back. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't. You couldn't. You would have no heart. But from 2017 when he beat Taker all the way on through to Mania the next year when they had that that snoozer with Bru- with Brock again, mm-hmm. like that was the period of we can't stand your ass now. 
Yeah. If we go and get back to that after Montreal, you in good shape. Yeah. So uh that's that's what I need to happen, man. One and also Sami Zayn beating Roman. Let's be real. Let's be real. Let's be let's be let's be Let's be all the way authentic, please. <laughs> it's certain it's certain levels of delusion that y'all gotta come down from. Like this dude has been a mascot for two for three different champions since 2019. Yeah. He was Shinsuke's mascot. He's been Roman mm-hmm. and the Usos mascot. Mm-hmm. Uh in addition to that, for the last two years straight, this dude has been a glorified loser for the most part. He's probably won a total of like 12 matches on TV in the last two years. And that might be saying that might be too much. Yeah. He lost to a 50-year-old independent stunt man at WrestleMania last I was just about to say that. Like you got cooked by Knoxville in front of I want him world. to end this 900 day reign, the, the longest reign since who was it, Bob Backlund, I believe. He might have passed Bob. Who's left? Bruno. Pedro, I think that's it. Terry, Terry had it four years. Oh God, we not we not acknowledge it that one. It's not canon to me, not no more. Hold on, fam. We all right. We, we all right, <laughs> I'm not acknowledging it. No, I ain't about to not acknowledge no Terry Reigns. Like he ain't do nothing egregious. Like like the you know the the woman who we don't acknowledge the reign of. Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's different. That's different. Like Terry was a politician and got caught saying the N word on videotape. I'm not gonna say he was never champion because of that. <laughs> I'm gonna definitely invite him to the cookout to get his ass beat, though. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. That's gotta happen. It's gotta happen. But yeah, man. Like we gotta we gotta come down from this delusion. Like y'all been y'all been sitting around the crib watching Rudy and getting your hopes up thinking like damn this could really happen <laughs> like nah man this is like like, like you said it, it, even if, if Vince was booking it he wouldn't even be in the conversation he wouldn't even be in the main event it is the fact that Triple H is booking it that this man is getting this shot but even he is saying listen it ain't happening but I'm just gonna suspend y'all this belief enough that y'all think it'll happen I don't think Sammy Zane then, wanna be champion anyway either well he he told Ariel he could did he? that's what yeah, he was saying earlier. Okay. He was like, "Yo, listen, like I could, I could be that guy that could, you know, hold the, the WWE title for a few months and stuff like that." And he, he was okay, confident I, I, about. It. I think he would want to like temporarily, and I think they might have him do it as like a transitional at some point. Uh, oh yeah, pencil What's him in from the... our pencil him from our early money in the bank winner right now. Yeah, because once they split the belts up, it. anything will be fair game once they split the belts yeah. up again. But like right now, he he not gonna like I said, man. He he's won a good handful of matches in the last couple of years, uh, because you know he started losing a lot uh, mm-hmm. after he lost. Who 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 did he lose the? It was the Biggie when he lost Intercontinental yeah. title. <clears throat> yep. And then after that, he just starts losing all the time, and then he does yeah. the conspiracy theorist gimmick, which and we then never that transitions. Got the... Yeah, it never got a conclusion. By the way, uh. Still have not seen that documentary. Wait, wait. Loses to Logan Paul Ooh, at Mania. Boy. Loses to Johnny Knoxville at Mania. Wait, no, he lost you know, a KO. He lost a KO. He lost a KO. Okay. Yeah, Lo- okay. Logan, Logan was out there because he was Logan, uh, Logan Paul. Okay. okay. Yeah, he was with him. Okay. 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 You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, you know there are people who only watch WrestleMania, right? That's sad. Like there, What's there the are people who only tune in to watch WrestleMania. Like, they don't follow along the entire year. But WrestleMania comes around, they making sure they're watching it. People That's, do that with the Super Bowl. People don't watch football all season long. When the Super Bowl happens, they tune in. Yeah, I don't understand that either. Like, I get it. I understand it. I like, people, it. like, people like people in the people, 80s, you know, back when WrestleMania was the only major show to watch, okay. But it's like, there's a whole story. Like they might tune that. in, like, periodically here and there. But like yeah. they really just watch Mania for the spectacle. They don't really care yeah. about following along with it. They can watch Mania and then understand everything that's been going on. Like WWE makes that easy for folks. Oh yeah. But for the people who only watch WrestleMania, if I was somebody who watched WrestleMania 
and I've seen Roman Reigns won both championships last year. Mm-hmm. And I've seen uh, earlier in that same show, I think both both uh, night two, they had the, the jackass I match. I think so. So, yeah, I believe it was night two. It's Google. Yeah, it was. I don't feel like looking. But, it was. It was um, I was watching the other day. Okay, cool. So, we have Roman holds up both championships. He just won both championships. And you think, like, oh, this is epic. And you see the dude had a jackass match earlier in the show. You ain't watched wrestling all year long until WrestleMania. <laughs> if I turned on WrestleMania and seen the dude that was wrestling in the jackass match who lost to Johnny Knoxville beating Roman Reigns, and I see, oh, shit, Roman still got both belts a year later, and I see him beat him, I'm not going to take that shit seriously, bro. I'm not. So that's that's literally the reason why they shouldn't have Sami Zayn beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. And then you hear the reactions Cody getting. Oh, of course. He hasn't not and, and that's what... action like that since he came back. Yeah. Last year, since he came back last year. And you want Sami Zayn to beat Roman? And that's another reason. I don't why think I you have the facilities for that, big man. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> and that's another reason why I say too. It's like people people aren't turning on Cody, but there's people on the fence. After Montreal, people Ain't are gonna get off the fucking Cody. fence. Ain't nobody turning on Cody. The crowds yeah. are not turning on Cody, no matter how much you in the, on the internet, on Twitter, on your podcast want to will that into existence. It's not going to happen. Because you know what? Dave Meltzer and all these other dirt sheets. That try to be like, oh, you're the crowds. They're not. They're not liking Cody. It's a lot of backlash. What backlash? What backlash has there been to Cody winning? Besides y'all on the internet, ninety percent of the people in the crowds are not on the internet. Let's be real. They're not turning on Cody, especially when the bloodline start beating Cody ass in a couple months, and they really gonna fuck it. Oh yeah, yeah, they cooking him. You think him. they're gonna bring back whooping Cody with his belt like MJF did? They should. They absolutely should. I don't think they should. Because I don't need to see a whole bunch of oh AEW did it first. I don't need to see all that. <laughs> That's gonna happen anyway. I don't need to see all that. Like I talked a lot about this. That's how that's how much I'm I don't need to see Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Y'all can do it in Montreal. It makes more sense that way. That's all I had to say about that. It's the truth. Facts. Let's, let's let's wrap this up, man. SmackDown. What else happened on SmackDown? Uh, Bald Ebony and Ivory win tag tourney, and uh, they're going to be taking on the Usos next week. Why? He said, "Who's Bald Ebony and Ivory? Ricochet and Braun Strowman." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did not know. Uh, just... Jay Uso showing up? You think? Uh, well, it depends on what's happening. If it's happening next week, it is happening next week. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think so. Um, he'll probably still be a little conflicted, but uh, mm. you know what I'm saying. My guy shows up to work, so I mean, I, I'm, I'm expecting to show up to work this week. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, if they really help day, that's all. Yeah, yeah. If they really want to like milk this story, they really want to get the best out of this thing with Roman and Sammy. Then you need to keep Jay on the fence a little bit. You need to keep Jay conflicted about how he feels, and we need to. Kind of make it look like he's between, you know, hey, I I want to I want to break free of this, to you know, I, I'm loyal to my soil, you know, gotta keep him on the in between, right I'm up to the point. Work the match and then leave. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. Do it right up to the point where, you know, Roman has his match with Sammy, and Jay shows up, and you don't know if he's gonna be on Sammy's side or not, and then flip the switch. He just Beat that nigga ass in front of everybody, and that that that's gonna be Lamelo that's what helps Roman win. Exactly. <laughs> I need that. I need that. I need I need Jay. I need Jay to fool all of you into this false hope that y'all think, like you just said, that Sammy might actually beat Roman Reigns, and the man who didn't want him in the first place, who was trying to get him the fuck out of here from day one, that finally switched up. 
finally saw the light and said, yo, I fucked with Sami Zayn. That's my brother. And then got his heart broke at the Rumble. We come back full circle, stab that nigga in the back in front of the whole city that he loves, that love him. And Roman's to step in, get that win, get his titles back, and then we on to make it. Matter of mm-hmm. fact, that's a, that's a spoiler alert. That's what's going to happen. I'm just calling it right now. You call me Negro Domus. That's what's going to happen. Because then it's going to set up the tag title match between the two of them and, and Kevin perfectly. So I, I'm calling it right now. That's what's going to happen. And uh, elsewhere on SmackDown, we got some uh, NASCAR rap beef. I didn't, I didn't even know they had beef like that in NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with this no more, man. Yeah, I really I, don't. Yeah, they, they, they've gotten completely like Will Ferrell. Literally, like we just we had a Ricky Bobby quote from Dom. Like two months ago, you called the cops on this on your son. You called the yeah. cops on this nigga, and now y'all are having races. Like, you what? know, I'm with it though, man. I, I like the fun, stupid shit anyway, so I'm I'm all for it. Uh, you know, it was it was cool. I just did not know that they had rat beef in NASCAR like that. I, I guess two so. drivers talking shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Charlie Flair defeats Sonya Deville for the SmackDown Women's Championship. I am uh, looking forward to them inevitably having yet another match. I feel like I've seen both of them wrestle each other for the last like three weeks straight. Yeah, I don't like it. getting crazy deja vu with this every time. I don't like it. I don't know what's going on. Me either. And I don't like it. I, d- I, d- I have no idea. It's just like, what are we doing? What are we doing? How many times has Sonya got to lose? Sonya got the real Karen gimmick. And I think she's doing a whole lot better than Chelsea Green will probably do it. Oh, it's a lot more subtle. She's been doing it better. Been doing it way better. Like, there was no there was no comparison whatsoever. That's another reason why I'm not feeling it. Because Chelsea, it's Chelsea is believable. But Chelsea's believable, but Sonya's natural. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like... She was out here trying to do Adam Pierce. Well, basically doing Adam Pierce's job because Adam Pierce ain't been doing his job right since since he got it. <laughs> he trying now. He are he getting some bass in his voice all of a sudden. Oh yeah. We we talked about how enthusiastic he was, but yeah. And uh let's let's finish this SmackDown, man. Uh your girl Natty qualifying for the chamber. You know, I can't even get mad. I can't even get mad. Because you notice I haven't done a lot of rants. Like, <laughs> there's been there's been so much peace and joy in my life on, as I'm watching wrestling that I hadn't even realized that Natty hadn't been on my TV probably since the summer. Maybe. Might have been before that. Like, break her nose or some shit? I, it was something. But she had not been on my TV screen in a very long time, and I have been very, very happy about that. So I can't even. I, I'm not. I'm not happy that she's in this match because I don't want to see her in this match. There's no purpose for her being in this match. But I'm okay with it at the end of the day because it's been so long, and I know she's not going to win. Like let's be real, that ain't winning no chamber matches. Uh, what does she do though? But I. Why you see? Why I gotta do that? Why I gotta do that? Don't, don't, don't if, put that out there. What if Natty tapped in? Oh. What if Natty don't tapped into Young Kings Wrestling and don't she heard that. what I said last week? Don't do that. That's, that's, when I said yeah. Bianca Belair, the greatest WrestleMania main eventer to ever wear the color pink. And Natty was just <laughs> like, hold on a minute, player. Now I need mm. to go avenge my Uncle Brett. Hell no. I, mm, I, I will match. start the riot. I'll start the riot myself if that day ever comes. I'm telling you right now. We talking pitchforks, torches, and everything. We're going to go full on Virginia on these motherfuckers. <laughs> like, I'm not, I will not tolerate this. I will not. Hey, it's, this is a great way to close the show out now that you brought that up. Oof. What wrestlers do you think was at that Charlottesville protest? Um, with the pitchforks, I, I would say Braun, but he would have stood out a lot more. 
Uh, same goes for Raquel. But uh, <laughs> I feel like they was. Jackson and Riker was in there somewhere. Oh, man. I know that, I know that for sure. Lacey, Lacey <laughs> Evans was in that bitch. Oh yeah, yeah, and she she probably she blended in perfectly too. Uh, who else? Who else? Shit, I don't know. That, 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 all all of them, all four of them, was definitely the same in there. wrestlers who would have been at the Capitol. Yeah, yeah. So so Jericho. Well, I I guess yeah. Jericho's wife was in there. Yeah, his, his wife was there. Yeah, y'all y'all, and we're not lying about that either. Yeah, she she absolutely was there. That's that's like confirmed. That's a fact. There. there are pictures a, of her. Yeah. Ephra, <laughs> how you know this? How you know this is white? She literally posted it. She she, she told you. It, that's she literally told you she was there. That's as factual Although as it she can went get. inside, but she was she was out there though. Yeah. Like I don't think she went inside. No, I, I'm sure she didn't. That's she saw the the one lady get shot. Crash, oh, crash through the window like. Yeah, man. Yeah, she she wasn't doing Actually, that. Babbitt got smoked. Yeah. <laughs> My brother, like, too. Yeah. Wasn't playing that. Like, yeah, man. Mm, mm, mm. Shout out to the Capitol Riots, bro. No particular nice. reason. Just shout out to it. Because cause there, was, there was this one random black dude walking around here. No idea what that was about. What were you doing in there, bro? You saw that shit on TV. It was like, oh shit, they wild, and I'm about to go see what they talking about. There was a, there was a, you know, a mandate. They had to have at least one black person in there, which is funny because uh, Friday we uh, went out with the uh, folks. My pops' birthday was Friday, so we took them all up to Atlantic hey, City. Birthday, Reek pops. Yeah, yeah, we took them to Atlantic City, went to dinner, and then we saw Chris Rock show. And he was talking about the rice too. He's like, that ain't that the most white. Planet of the Apes looking shit you've ever seen before. <laughs> and I started thinking about I'm like, damn, it was really bad like that. Ain't that the most white Planet of the Apes shit you ever seen? Yeah. That's my Chris Rock impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey man, man, Young Kings Wrestling. Got y'all a long ass show today. I, I, I definitely looked at the timer like an hour ago, like, yeah, we can wrap this up in 20 minutes. It's like, yeah. what's up, y'all? <laughs> Plug your social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all can find me at Recavery24 on Instagram and on Twitter. Also, go check out the Havoc Hour. We'll talk sports and entertainment on all platforms we find Young Kings Wrestling. Uh, I, I told y'all that's going on ice for a little bit because yeah. I got another podcast on the way for the Lehigh Valley Legends uh, professional basketball team out here. Uh, so, yeah, TBD, more incoming. But, yeah, all my content is up there, so go check that out. And, uh, Instagram page. I'm still keeping that updated for the moment. Uh, underscore to Havoc Hour underscore. Yeah, man. Got some uh, got some crazy NBA news earlier this afternoon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to update that, too. Certain, <laughs> certain niggas, teams <laughs> sitting on their fingers, sitting and twiddling their thumbs and not getting nothing, not getting nothing happening, man. Certain niggas, teams. Mm-mm. It's me. I'm niggas. <laughs> <laughs> it's all bad, man. Uh, I am the thespian TC Fontaine. You can follow me at TC Fontaine on Instagram at TC Fontaine on Twitter. Uh, follow my photography page FOY dot flicks on Instagram. That's flicks with a CKS. And uh, follow YK Wrestling everywhere. At YK Wrestling, subscribe to the YouTube. Got some Black History stuff coming up. Oh, yeah. uh, got some, uh, got some in the works. I ain't gonna tell y'all what it is because things might fall through. So, yeah, if they fall through, they fall through, and it never happened, and y'all weren't aware of it. Yeah. Versus, I'm not gonna get your hopes up. You know, I'm not gonna get your hopes up that Mercedes Monet is about to debut in this tag team match, and then she don't show up. <laughs> and I, I didn't made y'all think she was showing up this whole time, and then things fall through, or things just never were in the works to begin with, and I made y'all believe it. Yeah, we don't. Like we don't do shit like that. that. We don't do shit like that. It, it, like just, it doesn't make sense. Doing. It just don't make sense. Like some people be doing. 
<laughs> we know what time it is. I wonder who's gonna be this year's. I wonder who's gonna be this year. Ethel Johnson. Oh yeah. Yeah. I might. I might put that in motion here. I think oh, I might have somebody oh, that yeah. we can we can start to push at. Oh yeah, it's possible. But okay. until until uh until then. I don't want to leave y'all, man. I love y'all, man. But we were recording too damn long, and uh, y'all, y'all probably want to listen to some other podcasts or whatever it is that y'all do. So thanks. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. If not, you ain't gonna hear it anyway. So I know me <laughs> and me insulting you. I'm just gonna say that we go. We out. We out. <laughs>